In this part of our modules, we're going to be discussing the options of an immediate backup. With an immediate backup, we talked about in a previous module that Retrospect will only copy the new or changed files during a backup. So that's what we call a normal backup. And when I click on options down here, we'll see that normal backup has been selected. And because we've done a previous backup, our preview indicates that no files need to be copied. And so with no files need to be copied, we execute a backup, and the backup is going to be very fast, obviously, because there's nothing there. Now, if I want to reset this backup so that it starts all over again from the very beginning, I can go to Options and change it from Normal to Recycle. And when I click Recycle, you'll notice that the preview has now changed to indicate that 100% of the data needs to be backed up. If I were to execute this backup or start this backup, Retrospect would erase the contents of the backup set, clear out the catalog file, and then ask us to start again with the very beginning of the first disk, like 1-backup set A, and then begin to copy from 1-backup set A. And then we can also change it back to normal, and then Retrospect will once again show that there's zero files that need to be copied. Other options that are available to us are verification, and the verification on is the byte-by-byte -byte comparison pass that takes place after copying the data. We also have an option here that says data compression in software. The data compression inside software is an option that we use when there is not hardware compression available. So when you're writing to a uh, external hard drive or a CD burner or a network drive, then you would use the data compression in software to save additional space. On average, users typically will see about 30% compression. Uh, digital video and digital audio files may get 0% compression whereas a database may get 80 or 90 percent of compression. It all depends on the type of files that you're copying. In addition to this window, we have a button down at the bottom that says More Choices. And inside More Choices, we can go through and we can access different options. A lot of these options are not used on a regular basis, so they're not going to be covered during these trainings, but we will cover the key modules, or the key sections here. So the first one is Matching. We talked about how the matching is what Retrospect uses to identify a file that's new or changed since the previous backup. And what we can do is we can see here that the top two matching options are selected. And I'm going to click OK, and we're going to see that the need to copy is zero files. Well, if I go back over here to Options, and I go to Matching, and I uncheck the top matching box and click OK, Retrospect returns to indicate that 100% needs to be backed up. And what this is going to do is it's going to copy every single file again and append it to the end of the last piece of media for backup set A. It does not erase any data from a prior backup. All it does is add 100% of the data again as if the files have never been copied. Some users don't want to be able to, don't want to copy incrementally. They want to force it to backup every file every time, even though it may take additional disk or tape space. And so that's what the matching options are for. Now, if I return the matching to the default, I have another option down here that talks about match files in same location. This adds the path name as a matching criteria. Typically, the way Retrospect works is if I have a file on two separate computers that's 100% identical, the matching is only going to copy one version of that file, and it's going to use its snapshot technology to keep track of the file in both locations. So if I have an identical file in location A, an identical file location B, the matching will keep track of it in both locations so that when I go to do a restore, I will get a complete and correct restore whether I'm restoring from location A or location B. Well, if I turn on match only same location, then what will happen is it will copy the identical file in both locations. Once it's copied it from each location, it doesn't bother copying it a second time from location A or location B, because there's no point. The file's already on the media. But this option, once again, is going to take the path into consideration so that it will copy all versions of the file, no matter what location they're on. We also have some other options down here. One is called System, Backup System State. This is where you have the ability to turn on registry backup or turn off registry backup. So if the C drive is chosen as a source, and this option is selected, then it will automatically back up the registry. If you uncheck this option, 
then the registry will not be backed up and will not be restorable at a later date. Retrospect does not use the archive attribute to identify newer changed files, but we do give you the ability to reset the archive attribute after a backup so that if you're using Retrospect along with other backup software, then you won't be causing a conflict by not resetting the archive attribute appropriately. We also have an option down here for security, backup server security information. This specifically is the backup of MTFS permissions. We also have an option for backing up MTFS permissions from workstations. And so if I want to back up the permissions, I can check that, and then we'll get them from both workstations and servers. If I uncheck both of these options, it will continue to back up NTFS permissions for folders, but not for files. And so that's really what this option is controlling, is the ability to back up the permissions on the file level as opposed to the folder level. Retrospect does not give you an option for folders. You automatically get a backup of all folder NTFS permissions. We'll go ahead and set it to the user default. The next one we have is open files. Retrospect has an add-on for open file backup. And if you want to use the open file option, it's on by default, and this is where you can see the various settings for it. At a later time, we're going to do a training that talks a little bit about open file backup, and we'll discuss these additional options in more detail. If you do not have open file backup available, or you've not purchased the open file add-on, then you can use this option for your Microsoft Outlook. By forcing the backup of Microsoft Outlook, then what Retrospect will do is it will quit Outlook prior to a backup. And then when the backup is done, the user will have the ability to reopen Outlook manually following that backup operation. If you're doing backups of SQL or Exchange, then you have some specific options for SQL and Exchange Server. 